I'm Tim Roll, and this is Garage Customs. On today's show, I'm going to introduce you to the Longevity 200DX, both TIG and stick machine. I'll sh take you through basic setup and operations. So let's get to it. Now that you've unloaded your machine, you have it set it on a flat surface, let's go over how to set it up. First, we'll take the ground clamp, and that installs on the positive side for the TIG process. We'll take that, insert it, screw it in. Then you have two options here. One is for the foot pedal, the other one's for the torch trigger. I'm opting for the foot pedal right now, so I'll plug that in. Next up is our shielding gas. It's set up with a quick disconnect, and it's just a push and lock. And then we, on the negative side, we have hooked up our torch. Now let's cover some of the buttons on the machine and how to set that up for the process you're looking to do. Our upper row right here is base current, upslope, downslope, and preflow. Base current is goes into when you're uh, going to be welding with the torch trigger. And here's our torch and the torch trigger that I'm talking about. Upslope will set a base current, let's say, of 125 uh, amps. Upslope will set how we want uh, that to upslope and how quick, how many seconds we want to take it to get to that level. Used in the 4T mode, we'll push the button, and this is where the upslope, it'll ramp up to the amperage that you're going to be welding at. Then you push the button one more time and then it'll start dealing with the downslope and you can tune that in. And then right here we have preflow that works in all modes. That's how much shielding gas, how many seconds of shielding gas is going to be coming out and making that happen. Down here we have our row that's dealing with just pretty much our pulse. When you set pulse current, that is set up for the high side. Pulse frequency is how often you want it to pulsate. I have mine set right now at 0.2. Um, pulse width, that's how long you want it to be on the high side, so you can tune that in. And then here we have a pulse off, uh, medium, and high. Over here we have our different modes on switches. We have the TIG and stick mode, AC, DC, lift arc, and high frequency, and then the 2T and the 4T. 2T just works simply by pushing the button, it's on, pushing the button, it's off. It doesn't upslope or downslope. Coming on our aluminum side, when we're dealing with AC, we have AC frequency and balance. Setting those up, uh, we have arc force, and then we have uh, arc force is only used when you're using uh, stick welding. We have start amps and end amps. That's how mild you want the start, torch to start, and then how controlled you want it to come back down. Uh, and post flow, how long we want it to cool our weld puddle, and it also works on cooling the torch. You've received your torch, and here's what it looks like all stripped down. Uh, this is the WP20 torch, uh, it's the smaller one of the two. Here's your toggle on top for your 2T mode and 4T mode. Comes with uh, the standard collet body with the four holes in it. Um, basically, you'll just screw in like this and then your gas cup will attach to this over the years welding uh, I found that I really really enjoy a gas lens and this is what a gas lens looks like uh, I have it set up with a, a 1 16th uh, tungsten and while we're on tungsten uh, talk about sharpening tungsten you always want to sharpen it this way this grinding stone or the uh, belt sander and you want to sharpen it towards what you're doing uh, for the the arc uh, proper arc radius and we'll flip this around and something a little new is for the inverter based uh, machines I'm going to use the uh, orange uh, tungsten which is 2% seriated or the gray which is uh, also 2% so I'll put my gas lens on. Uh, another thing to note about the torch is uh, all the parts with the uh, weld craft uh, torches that maybe you've been welding with for, your, for years are interchangeable with all of this. Same stuff. So we'll set that up. And that's what our gas lens looks like set up. A uh, little note, I use 16th up to uh, the 16th seriated up to 125 thousandths. Um, in steel, but I do jump up to uh, 330 seconds uh, to weld uh, 63 thousandths aluminum. Uh, 
The 16th just doesn't have enough to stabilize the arc with uh, how high I have my frequency set. I'm running about 240 on my frequency. So that's it for torch setup. We are set up to weld some 1020 VOM and I'm using 15 on my flow rate for my argon. I'm on DC and set up right around 125 amps and we'll see how she welds. I left my gas lens there to both shield the weld and help cool the torch a little bit. And we got some pretty nice uh, beads going there. TIG welding is just as simple as that. This is when things get a little bit more intel to set up. Uh, the setup I'm doing right now is going to be DC pulse. So on my pulse current, I have that set to 96 on the high side and 36 down on the low. Uh, the pulse frequency is going to be set at 0 0.02 and the pulse width is set right about 70%. That sets up for a pretty good pulse on steel. Just at one dab a second. of that shows up on video but sure is a nice nice little pattern right there and that's set up to do about one pulse a second with how we have the width set up. Uh, I really like this for welding on the bench. Um, works really really well and something that I would definitely use. It's worth uh, taking the time to set it up. Okay, what we have here is 63 thousandths 5052 H32 aluminum. Getting ready to weld it, switch the machine to AC. I've set the AC frequency to 200, the balance to 60%, and the argon flow rate to 15. And I switch my tungsten to 330 seconds, and once again it's the 2% serrated, and set up to weld aluminum. And if you notice I have the ground connected to the aluminum, uh, very important, uh, learn, learn this through the years that you know, you're going to do a little welding on an aluminum radiator, you need to put the ground on the radiator or it will take the path of least resistance, which is usually through one of your fins in the core, and you create more of a leak than you've done. So just remember, connect your ground to the piece that you're working on, and you should be good to go. All right, let's see how she welds. And right here we have our nice stack of dimes look, which uh, everyone's looking for. Turned out really nice. Now that we've covered machine setup, operation, some of the operational settings, and uh, we've done some welding on both steel and aluminum, I uh, showed you a little bit about pulse. I'd like to talk a little bit more about shop setup, and specifically right now, since we're welding, I'd like to talk to about the welding table. Uh, I set a welding table up just to be about elbow height. So I can come down, maybe I'm tacking something up, and I come to the table real quick. i got to get down, hammer down, get some tacks on it, go fit it back up on a car, a uh, custom motorcycle, or a part that I'm building. Uh, I really don't like to sit down and weld. Uh, you know, I, beginning I had a stool, and it just seemed not to, to work out as well. You get down, you get lazy. You're sitting down, you're standing up all day. I'd rather stay on the move. Uh, just my personal preference, but I thought I would throw that out there. Uh, my table is half inch plate and it is digitally leveled. I have uh, adjusters on each corner. Once again, utilizing the trailer hitch, uh, have the vise stuck in it, my Beverly shear. I can take that if I'm shearing stuff and I want to work more on this side. Maybe I'll take the vise and plug it in over here, take my Beverly shear and put it here, so I'm right there. So once again, so keeping your, your environment so it's very modular so you can move it around from a motorcycle project, a car project, or welding up diff, maybe a different fitment or something. So that's it for today's show. Uh, right now I'd like everybody to email me and let me know what you'd like to see next. Uh, give you the option of doing a, building a custom street fighter with a lot of hand formed aluminum work or looking at maybe doing a very lightweight mini buggy. Uh, with utilizing like a GSXR 750 motor. So send me some emails, let me know what you'd like to see next, and get out in the garage and go build something.